All right, so what we're going to talk about is, first of all, is the uh, SMC MAP 201, and then we'll get on to the 202, 203. Uh, we're first of all just going to talk about the operational sequence uh, of this uh, pick-and-place robotic system. Um, as far as the system, you can see it uh, in the picture up above. Actually, the picture in the uh, top right-hand corner is uh, actually shown with an um, uh, S... Uh, uh, S, uh, sorry, Siemens uh, PLC, but this one actually has a um, Allen Bradley system. So let me just show you what I mean by that with the video here. So what we have right down here is an Allen Bradley, um, and that's a Micrologic 1000. Now, the important thing about the Micrologic 1000 is that if you're going to go through and connect it up, you can use the MicroStarter um, RS Logic software. I'm going to kind of spin around here and just say that this is the MAP201 system. And as I let's see if I can come over here, this is the MAP205 system. And the MAP205 system, this is the MAP201 system that is part of this entire MAP205 system. And you'll see the 205 system uses a larger PLC. Uh, this PLC is the uh, MicroLogic 1500. Now, the thing about the MicroLogic 1500 is that you cannot use the MicroLogic MicroStarter. So, the MicroStarter is probably the one that you actually have installed on your own system. But in order to connect up to this system, you have to have the RS Logic 500 or the RS Logic Pro software. That software is a licensed software. We have it on laptops in our lab. So you will not be able to use your own laptop to connect this. You'll have to use one of the uh, departmental uh, uh, PL, uh, sorry, laptops. But back to the system here, what you'll see is the system is actually a combination of those four different systems, the MAP201, the MAP202 system, which has a different type of manipulator there. We have the MAP203 system, which has kind of a, a rotary type system there. And then this is a combination of rotary and vertical or um, translational and uh, uh, it I'll just kind of mention here it all puts together uh, this body part uh, gets a combination of a bearing and I can't get the bearing off there but the bearing fits in there and then what happens is this sits in the middle of the bearing and then the cap comes up on top and so what we're going to be doing is talking about each of the individual systems uh, we'll be talking about the body part, the uh, shaft part, which is the 204 system here. And that's the bearing there. The bearing is the 203. So, I'm oh, sorry, 202. Body, bearing, shaft. Oh, shaft is 203. And uh, 204, that's not right. I'm getting those systems backwards. Oh, well, we'll get those worked out. I'm pretty sure that this is the 202. All right. So we'll see those a little bit later, but the 201 is the one that we're going to focus on here, first of all. Uh, it's called the body feeder uh, with detection. And so what do they mean by detection here is that we have this body piece here, and it's going to go, let me get this out of the way here so we can see it, this cassette. So what you'll see here is that this piece is going to come down, and it will go in there if it is correctly positioned. If it's upside down, what you'll see is that verification piece cannot go down there. And so we're going to be using this cylinder to determine if our body piece is correctly positioned. Uh, what you'll see here is that this is kind of a drop chute. So what happens is um, pieces will fall down here. This block here moves a, move along here. And so what happens is this one rides on top of this as this one is pushing this one forward, right? And when once it gets pushed forward, it comes back. And once that clears a spot, it'll allow another piece to drop down. So let me just put this one back in here. We'll put this on the top. And then if you're in the lab, this makes a lot of noise. All right, I'm just loading it up here. And we've got them all loaded up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go through the operation of this. But before we go through the operation of it, uh, what I'd like to do is to go through and return back to the um, documentation here. So if you're in the training manual, what you're going to see in the training manual, um, and 
I think this is like page uh, nine or something like that, there is a listing here that shows me the operational sequence of what's going to happen. It actually, if you were in the lab, we'd actually have to go through and turn the air pressure on, make sure it's appropriately set, um, and then go through these different steps. And this is just some, a verbose explanation of what those steps are. You run through it once manually, and then you go through and have it run uh, automatic. Now, typically, you actually run it through automatically and go back and then uh, do it manual. But I'm just going to start off with the manual environment. But that's not where I want to start with. I'm going to go to the appendix of this documentation. And part of what I mentioned earlier was something called the graph set. So the graph set, I don't know, it's a French word, it's a combination of different words, uh, conjugate. Uh, basically, what it is, is is kind of a flow chart. And hopefully I've got this, I can zoom this in so that you can see it a little bit better. One more time. And so what you'll see on this, it actually has steps. And as I go through and zoom in, what you see, it shows six steps here. And the reason I want to mention that is because in the training manual, it shows nine steps. So which is right? Well, it's six steps, but multiple, what you'd have to do is say, well, this is press the start button. Well, that's not a step. That's just telling you what to do. So there's parts of this which don't match up exactly to what we refer to as the graph sort or the actual steps of the process. Now, I do want to kind of describe a little bit of what it's showing you here. Uh, so this is step number one, step number two, step number three. Okay, so it says set A plus. All right, so A plus is an actuator. I just happen to know that C plus is an actuator. All right, so it says go through and activate some actuator. And um, we'll see what that is in just a moment. What you'll see here is a letter here, A1. That's actually a sensor. That says, wait till you see that sensor. And once you see that sensor, then you can move to step number two. So the idea here is we're creating kind of a process flow and segmenting different elements out. And this helps when we have to go back and troubleshoot it. Uh, if there's something with C+, we don't have to look. We can just focus just on that step. They're not all happening at once. It shows a flow of process that we can go through and back and troubleshoot. Now, this looks like an L, but it's supposed to be an I. That says timer zero. So what this says, it says that C has to actuate, and there's a timer that goes on. And so the timer has to expire, and the C1 indicator are on. So it's looking at both of those to determine whether or not to go to the next step. All right. So we'll talk a little bit more of this as I go through the process here. Hopefully, I can go through and show a lot of this at once. I have another setup here. So um, let's see here. There we go. So I have already gone through and let me move some things around here and connected up a laptop and started up the uh, RS Logic software so that we can go through and see what's going on. Let's see, switch here. Um, so to see what's going on on the PLC as well as the system. So let's first of all talk about the, the lights here. And I need a small pointer. All right. So on the lights, you'll see on the top right hand corner, I'm going to be showing pointing here on uh, the camera view, but you'll probably want to go through and look in the small upper right hand view. What you'll see is there's 0, 1, 2, 8, 3, 4. So it's starting with 0 there. So this shows me my inputs down below here. It shows me the outputs and their outputs. So in the uh, screen on the bottom is from my RS Logic software. And sorry, my cameraman only has two hands. So Sorry about this. He's going to move things around here. So what you should see if I don't do this incorrectly here. So I've got my outputs listed up. You'll see there's all zeros across there. So everything is off. Down below here, I have one, two, and three. Now, what's nice in the software is if I hover over it, I get a little help uh, uh, tool tip that pops up, which you can't see. Um, this system actually has everything labeled. So that if I go through here and hit number one with the right button here, come on. There. So down below, you'll see that one is the stop button. Well, that's interesting. How come the stop button is on, right? Well, if I push the stop button here, it goes off. Okay, so what that tells me is the stop button. I know I'm getting ahead because we're not doing the electrical part. I just want to kind of mention here that this is a normally closed button. So it's actually sending the signal, say, it ha it's on, right? And we push it to turn it off. Starts the opposite. When you push it down, it's going to turn it on. So this is normally 
close button, normally open button, potentially. We'll have to actually look at the electrical system to, to do that. But I just wanted to go through and point out some of the, the different indicators are on. So if I go through and press on um, I2, I02 here, it shows me that that's the button for the automatic and manual control. So if I turn this, that number two should go off, and it does. Okay, it also should showing it on the, the, the uh, input table there on in the PC, PLC environment. So I'm going to leave that in the manual mode. And then the last one, there are three. Let me go through and click on number three. So it says this is the body feeder backwards. So now we're going to start looking at some stuff. And I'm not going to go through all of this right, right now. I just want to show the sequence of it and, and what we'll eventually be doing. But this light right here, that's A0. A0 is on. Okay, there's A1. Now, why is A1 important? Because I said on the graph set that once A1 gets on, then I can go to step number two. All right. So if I was to go through and we're going to go ahead and start this up, I got my pressure on, but I have it locked on. So now typically um, in some environments, some um, labs, they would have plexiglass all around this so that once it was enabled, you can't stick your hands in there. But you know, probably not the safest but this is the way we're going to do it so I'm going to hit the start button when I hit the start button okay let's toggle back over here uh, I can see the start button here is zero so we're going to see this zero come on when I push the button in fact I'm going to push it twice and not going to do anything but because what happens there's uh, this one has to get this indicator has to come on before it'll actually move to the next step so I'm going to push it twice here just so you can see so and you'll see it's going out really slow and eventually the light came on right and there we go four came on right so that's the first step in the graph set and let me go through and transition back to the graph set uh, so that you can see that come on move my arms around so graph set said that we are waiting for s1 to go out and a1 to trigger so what is it going to trigger next by looking at the graph set? It says that it's going to trigger C+. Now, what is C+. Well, I have to kind of position around here so you can see all of this. So on this cylinder here, it says that this is cylinder A. So nice thing that they labeled it. Makes it a lot easier for us. It's instructional. But I also have here, you'll see A+. This A, oops, I bumped my camera. Uh, me just a second while I reposition something here. Uh, camera man. All right. So A is the actuator. A plus is also an actuator, but it's the directional control valve. The A plus you'll see is lit. And guess what? Over here, zero is lit. So let's transition back over and take a look at C down below the output. And when I switch over there, it's going to hide the inputs for just a second. What we're going to see here, body feeder forward, that's A+. plus. That's the valve, not the cylinder. How do we know the cylinder is moved? Well, that's where our inputs, that's where I3 and I4. So one is A0, the other one's A1. That's how I can determine whether or not that cylinder has moved, oops, sorry, has moved forward or not. All right, so let's go through and run the next step. Uh, as far as the next step, uh, it says that C plus will go down. So what we should see is C plus activate here. And then what we'll see up here is, uh, bump the camera again. So uh, up, doo, 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 doo. so it's hard for me to see everything here at once here. So this is the C cylinder. So we're just going to go through the steps now. I, I'm not going to go through it and list everything out, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. If you go back and run this slower and you wanted to look to see what's going on, um, the, ta the problem is, is that I can't go through and click on the input and output table here, which I will do later on. But I'm just going to go ahead and push it. What you're going to see here is the verification cylinder comes down. All right. There was also a timer on it. The timer, what it does is if that was upside down and it came down. It says, hey, if that that bottom red light didn't come on there. If the timer runs out and I haven't hit that bottom yet, that must mean, hey, I've got it upside down. All right, so that's the idea. So what happens next here, 
uh, that will have to retract. We're eventually going to want to move this thing, this uh, body piece forward. So step two is going to be retracting the verification cylinder. Now that is pinched in. The, the body piece is pinched in up against the body that back there. So it's going to have to retract this piece here. And there's retracting. Actually retracted a little bit faster than it went out. There's a discussion about that with the pneumatic system. The next thing we'll do is to go through and push that forward. So let's go through and rotate over here so we can see it come forward. So uh, this is four. Okay, I lost my steps there. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. This is step five. So that's moving that forward. You can take a look at graph set. Now that was moving pretty fast. Uh, we might want to slow that down a little bit. Now I will say the system is not properly connected up. What there should have been is a speed control valve here. Uh, it's not on there. So what's going to happen here is um, typically in a real system, if this is the right piece, it would be picked up and put on the, on the assembly line. But in this case, uh, we don't have an assembly line to put on. So regardless of a good piece or bad piece, it actually goes through and it's going to eject it down this chute. So what happens, because this doesn't have a, a speed control valve, uh, step back. Yeah, it kicks it out pretty fast. Uh, so that's where we want to have the speed control valve. And if I went back to the 205 system, you'll see um, on our 205 system, zoom down here, the 205 system, wait, there's no flow control valve there either. Well, it happens to be back here. All right. So that's one thing that's missing on the system. Who knows who put it together? Forgot to put that in. Eh, maybe I should go through and put one in. Right. So that's the execution of it. I'm going to go through and run this one more time here. As I said, we normally do it automatic first, but now we'll watch the whole thing in its full glory. Uh, everything is right. Let's go through and first to automatic. And as I said, you know, you could go back and look at all the inputs and outputs out one by one. Um, I'll show you where you can look those up as well. Oops, am I on automatic? Yeah, it's pushing it forward. Real slow. Verification cylinder, checked out okay. Retract, push forward, and then eject. All right, so that's the uh, SMC MAP201 system. Uh, what we'll be doing next is going through and talking about the, the pneumatic system, and then we'll go through and talk um, about the, um, uh, the uh, electrical system after that. So stay tuned for more details on that. And that completes the operational sequence and the graph set part of the MAP201 system.